Rob, you guys started the season two and ten, and now you're on to the Western Conference Finals. How's that sound to you? It's amazing. I mean, the Warriors, classy organization, obviously defending champs. Want to give them respect for a great series. They have incredible players, and you know, I think I think the early season trials have really built our strength and fortitude as a group. I think it. Um, in some way, it brought us together. Obviously, added new players, but they they just felt the togetherness and the competitive nature of this team. And you had a big part in bringing six new guys here. Did you know the pieces would fit this well together? You know, I think that's the important thing. Is is sometimes you you try a move, and if it doesn't work, your job is to fix it. And we're always evaluating that. And we felt like we wanted to address some things at the trade deadline, in particular our our wing size and shooting and playmaking and. Usually at the deadline, you can check one box or, you know, kind of address one need, and we were able to do all of that, and I think it shows in how this team's playing and how we're winning at a high level, and we're just grateful for the hard work that everyone helped, you know, pull those trades off. We all know the numbers with LeBron, 38 years old, 20 NBA seasons tonight. All he did, 30 points, 9 rebounds, and 9 assists. I think we're all speechless. I mean, it's he's an ageless wonder to be able to do that in a closeout game against one of the best defenses and the defending champs. Um, just the force he played with, the energy, it's its unbelievable to see for a guy in his 20th year. Last question for you, Rob. Denver uh, awaiting in the finals. What, what type of challenges do they present? You know, they were the best team in the regular season, so you've got to give them the utmost respect, and um, we're going to. I think, obviously, an MVP candidate in Jokic, Jamal Murray's playing well. They have a great supporting cast, and uh, they're going to be ready. And uh, I think we're going to celebrate this series win today, hopefully spend some time with our moms tomorrow on Mother's Day, which will be good. But we'll be ready to put up a fight in Denver on Tuesday when the series opens. Beat him pretty soundly today, too. What does that mean to you? You know, they're, they're different. You know, they, they, their offense is like so different. You know, they um, move different. They, they're very really physical. So, you know, um, they're a great team. But, you know, we, we, we didn't back down. You know, we, uh, we talk about, you know, we have to compete. You know, we, our, you know, the, um, the game, game plan was pretty good. So, you know, we, we just had to, you know, uh, put the effort on and no. energy then tonight I think we did it that's why we won. Drew. LeBron was one rebound and one assist away from a 30 point triple double. He's, he's 38 years old right? Mm -hmm. I don't know that yeah he's yeah he's amazing you know that's one thing I, I surprised about you know you know when I got here you know you know it's uh, how crazy he like you know he um, take care of the, his body you know how think about his game the game play the game you know everything's like you know in a high level you know it's a uh, and so consistent, you know. It's a, uh, it's a crazy, and it's amazing that I'm, going, I'm, I'm, I'm really his teammates, and I can watch them, you know, right, you know, close to it. So yeah, it's, uh, it's been great. AD, 17 points and 20 rebounds. He looked pretty healthy tonight, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, I told you, yeah, he was fine. You know, <laughs> um, you know, he did, of course, you know, his, his thing, and uh, you know, this team is like, you know, very, very deep. So you know, we just gotta, you know, keep building the chemistry, and uh, we just gotta. Uh, get the next one. Yeah. It's one of the most important things between now and game one, just getting some rest. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think we're going to have like a couple of days between, so, you know, we just got to, maybe we can, we can get rest tomorrow. So, we just got to rest and um, get out of mind for a little bit and then we get back to work. Yeah. Clay, well, you Thompson that. A, Clay Thompson had a terrible series. How were you able to affect him the way you did? You know, just, uh, you know, we had, we talk about, you know, we have to get into his body, you know. He, um, if he has a little space, he can shoot. So you just gotta, you know, uh, stick to him and don't get up. You know, he he does all the push off and all that. So we can't, we don't we 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 taught him. We talk we actually talk about. It. We can't we don't want to flop. You know, we just wanna we're gonna fight through. And uh, that's what we did the whole season. That's why you know he couldn't really get the good 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 looks. Yeah. All season long, how did you feel like tonight was an example of that? And it, do you feel like that's the main thing that got you to uh, where you want to go getting out in series? Totally. Um, a great defense is the best offense. I just think uh, our guys is focused um, in film study, the communication, going through our walkthroughs, talking through scenarios, switching up different matchups, switching up different lineups in our walkthroughs. Um, I think it all helps. I think everybody, you know, working really hard to be on the same page, to make sure we're on the same page. Each and every individual, each and every coach, uh, it's it's. I mean, just a hell of a job by everybody. Um, and 
Kudos to Golden State, man. It was a hell of a series. You know, they're, they're defending champs multiple times over for a reason. It's a tough, 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 tough team um, that makes you work, you know, <laughs> not just during the game, but even off hours, like in between game day, you're, you're, you're trying to just dig through the film and just seeing what different nuances they're throwing at you. How can you defend them? How can you score? Like, you know, they, they, uh, they really put a lot of pressure on you to be on, you know, on your P's and Q's. So salute to those guys. Um, but I'm, I'm super duper proud of our guys, you know, the players, the coaches, Rob, Jeannie, like I'm, I'm so happy for the entire organization to be able to sit here and be in this position. Have, you know, a, a challenging year to say the least, but at the end of the day, we kept powering through. Our vibes stayed positive. Um, and, you know, once we righted the ship and uh, switched out some pieces, it came together. And um, I'm just happy and thankful that I get to sit in this seat and enjoy the ride. We talked about LeBron before the game. You said you were going to need something from everybody. Yes. Uh, but just now, that performance tonight in this stage of his, uh, of his career, uh, how would you summarize it? Man, just our leader. He and A both has been our leader, not just by chatter, by example. Um, stepping up, playing big in the biggest of moments. Uh, those guys really helping the young guys, really communicating with the coaching staff. Um, and again, you know, it's, it's, it's things that we all see out there and everybody communicating with one another, sharing dialogue, having dialogue. Um, to just to find the best way, not your way, my way, his way, their way, but the best way to go about our business. And so uh, it was on, on display tonight, you know, did a great job playing downhill with one assist, one rebound short of a triple-double, fingerprints all over the game, steals, block shot, and then A, just controlling the glass. Um, you know, Dennis setting the tone on Steph early defensively. Um, D'Angelo playing solid, being just doing a little bit of everything. Um, Austin, Lonnie, Rui, Vando, uh, all of those guys, man, just pitching in and, and, and really making plays all over the place, on and off the ball. Some stuff that shows up in the stat sheet, some won't. But um, at the end of the day, it was a good, good, solid, really huge team win. Darvin, uh, congrats on closing out tonight. Thank you. Um, LeBron, the offense running through him early on really felt like it set the tone. How much of that was by design? A lot, you know, we want to put pressure on Steph and, and, and Clay and, and, and Jordan to have to guard, defend multiple actions, to sort of try to take some energy out of their legs, forcing them to defend um, multiple plays, multiple actions, initiating versus them, you know, seeing them on the second side, going to another second side action, even a third side action, or just ice, isolating them in a situation where they had to guard on the ball or guard screeners or get hit, you know, by us screening them. So I thought it worked out well. You know, it was a lot of dialogue, again, between the coaches, players, you know, Brian, you know, us throwing stuff at them, them responding with different things. By the time I get to the huddle, you know, they already have a good – idea, a good, clear idea how they want to attack, and that is great. You know what I mean? Just to have a team with an IQ like that that's not just waiting to be told something. or that, and, and that's okay, too. But, you know, when you're coaching and everybody's it's an interactive situation, it just like you just – it just – the care factor. It, ta it takes the care factor to a whole entirely different level, um, a positive one at that. And so um, our offensive attack, we just want to, again, not settle – not play soft, not play slow. We want to really just go downhill, live in the paint, and I think you saw that from the amount of free throws we took. I mean, it just we just stayed aggressive. Me too. Darwin, over here. I hate to spin you ahead, but I will. What's it like, the game plan for Jokic, and what have you thought about the way he's played in the playoffs so far? BT, if you're around on Sunday, I will let you know. <laughs> You're not going to push the fast forward button on me that fast. We already know that monster in the, in, 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 in the Rocky Mountains that's waiting on us. But we're going to take it. Is it okay if we enjoy this one tonight? Do you yes, mind? You can. yes, you can, Darwin. I appreciate you. Nice suit, by the way. Like, like. Uh, no, no, more De no more Denver questions, please. I'm just joking. Darwin, um, two, two for you. Um, Austin shot at the end of the first half. Um, how, 
as they they've shown the ability to close in, in flashes. How important was that shot, do you think, for this team? And then secondly, um, after you guys beat Memphis, LeBron sat in that locker room and, and talked about the levels and how each level was going to get harder. Um, did you see your team soak that message in tonight, as, especially in the way that they never really let Golden State come all the way back or, or, or really make it close? Absolutely. Um, you know, Austin shot was a huge shot in the arm for us to take the lead back to double digits. And I was already pissed at him because I felt like he turned down some good looks, you know, on catch. You know, he, he takes close out with him a lot, close out to him a lot with their hands down to the, the defense. And I feel, I feel like, you know, he, he's one of those guys I just want him shooting it every time he touches the ball when he's open. Um, so he had turned down a couple. Thing. One of them ended up in a turnover. And then, you know, for him to knock that down, again, take the lead back to 10 points. I think it was a 10-point lead at halftime. Um, it was great. And then, you know, you just saw the, the focus. When we went through some clips at halftime, you know, looking at, you know, trying to get better on the defensive glass was one of the main priorities. Um, and also continuing to play downhill, not to settle, not, you know, not to let the first 24 minutes go to waste. And so, um the guys came out with a focus, and then, you know, it, it was uh, it was great. What was the second part of the question, Dan? I'm sorry. What LeBron said after the – Oh, yeah. After, and, and was that, the message similar again today? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Right on point. Um, we surpassed level one against Memphis. Now we surpassed level two against uh, Golden State. And now level three is, you know, it's, 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 it's going to be a hell of a challenge. Um, you know, we're going to enjoy this one tonight take some time, get our thoughts together, recharge the battery tomorrow, and then really come ready to work on Sunday um, and putting together a game plan, which we've already started the process on. Um, I, I just think, you know, it, it, and this is what the league is about. You know, the fewer teams, the tougher the matchups, the more skilled the players. Um, talking about the two-time MVP with a well-balanced squad, hungry, um, great synergy, great chemistry, great ability, athleticism, shooting, all of the above. So we're going to have our work cut out for us, but, you know, they got to guard us too. And so we're going to do our due diligence, as we always do, and just be prepared for game one. But right now we're going to soak all of this in and try to enjoy this tonight, fill our cups back up tomorrow, and be ready to go back to work on Sunday. Darvin, Darvin um, one of LeBron's – favorite phrase this is saying he likes being comfortable being uncomfortable and yeah. now that you've been through the first year on the inside uh, and seeing that sometimes the teams he plays for attract all sorts of attention that can lead to uncomfortable situations when he's not even calling for it sometimes do you feel like that journey can steal a group can build a group to be ready for the intensity of the playoffs because the regular season can maybe involve more scrutiny than it would for a team that LeBron doesn't play for? Absolutely. Uh, you know, they uh, they expect nothing from great, but greatness from him, you know, and, and not off of what he always says or how articulate he can, you know, relay something in a in an interview or pre- or post-game interview. Like, it's about the work he's put in and where he's placed himself not just in this league today, but amongst the greats. And so um, that's always going to be the case. The biggest thing is can you stay solid? Can you stay consistent? That's the one thing he respects. My short time being his head coach, knowing him for years, but now being able to see it up close, the consistency, the level-headedness, coming to work with a plan. Um, things don't go your way. You don't throw the baby out with the bath water. I mean, you try to see the silver lining and the glass half full in all situations. And uh, the year we've been through, the way we started to get to this point now, um, and then the changes that were made to our roster, basically flipping our roster, and the way those guys came in with a hunger and, you know, just vibrant energy because a lot of those guys in this locker room has never and have never been this far in their individual careers. So it forces Brian to be more vocal. It forces AD to be more vocal. We pick up Tristan Thompson, a great, great addition from a mental, spiritual standpoint, someone who can also still play. And so 
you bring all of that, all of that positive energy, productive energy, everyone pulling in the same direction, it's cool. And we just gotta, again, stay humble with our success um, and just take wisdom and lessons away from each and every situation, whether we come out on top or come out, you know, not so on top, we lose. But they're all wisdom and lessons, and we just got to keep learning from that stuff and moving forward in the right direction. Darvin, uh, yesterday you, you hinted at a potential lineup change, but you know, so it was something you were considering with, with your coaching staff. Uh, what, when did you guys officially decide to, to move Dennis into the starting lineup, and how did that dialogue go between Dennis and Jared and, and just kind of him accepting? Well, that was that? decided this morning. Uh, we, we, was, you know, we had start kicking around the idea yesterday, but it was the final decision was made this morning by myself and the rest of the staff and talked to Vando. He understood. He was a trooper about it. And, you know, again, it's not about his way, my way, their way, the best way. And we felt like the best way for us to put ourselves in a position to be successful today was to put Dennis, have him start and set the tone on Steph. Vando's done an amazing job. We don't win game one without Vando. We're not in this series without Vando. But it's about the team, what's best for the team. And Vando understood that. Um, Dennis came in and set an unbelievable tone defensively. Um, his relentlessness, you know, he's the best guy to defend him on the team. Um, and not just on the team, but probably one of the best in the league to defend Steph. So. We wanted to set that tone early, that defensive mindset, him being aggressive and, and feisty and that no-quit mentality. And uh, he got us off to a great start. Darvin, over here. Um, when did you know for sure that Anthony Davis would be able to play, or was there ever any doubt? And also for a guy who was carried off in a wheelchair the other night to come back in 20-rebound performance tonight, that's pretty remarkable, isn't it? It's, it's, it's unbelievable, but that's just who he is. You know, it's, you can't get caught up in the chatter and, all the the nonsense that goes on outside of our building in regards to AD. I mean, you just have to come in and just understand that there's a plan in place. And, you know, our medical staff assured us that he would be okay. You know, it was an unfortunate hit that he, he took. But he was, you know, by the time we were getting ready to leave the arena in San Francisco, he was already on pace to, uh, you know, start getting himself back together, feeling great. And um, I woke up this morning to a text from him and, saying how great he felt and so, so much better. And he couldn't wait to get to the game. And um, so it's, it's great. We would never play possum or put our players out there without our medical staff really green lighting it. Like, we, we, we don't do that. And, and so uh, his ability to come out and his impact was huge um, on both sides of the ball. He was huge, specifically cleaning up the glass because, again, this team will kill you with their second chance and third chance opportunity. So his defensive right rebound, I think, what, 17 defensive rebounds? Unreal. Um, and so I, I hope whatever was said, whatever was said, you know, whatever has been said, that he gets the same energy, albeit on the positive side, instead of all the foolishness. Darvin, it's been such a positive national story from the start at 2 and 10, where you guys did flip in the roster. As a guy in the middle of that, to where you are right now tonight, uh, what has impressed you the most in that body of work? Just the due diligence of the coaching staff, the performance team, our front office, our ownership, constantly, you know, being supportive, being positive. Um, Everybody just, again, seeing ways we can get better, not getting disappointed, not getting discouraged. When there was a lot of times early, we could have done that. But, you know, this thing is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So if you take day by day by day and try to get better at something each and every day, um, and then you get to the point where everybody is on the same page, everyone is holding on to the rope with both hands, pulling in the same direction, you'd be surprised how your circumstances can change for the better. And uh, me being the head coach of this team, just again, them not seeing me sweat, you know what I'm saying? Like not being too high, not being too low, keeping everything in perspective, but constantly knowing we have to get better, we have to get better, we have to get better. And the only thing I told them is from day one all the way through, we have to be the most competitive, together, accountable team in the league, in the world. 
and um, I think we we're at that point where we're competing at a very high level. Everyone's on the same page together, and if it's some any type of breakdown, or whatever, we can go have dialogue with one another without anybody taking it personal or somebody, you know, just just being slighted. You know, it's it's, it's real, credible, genuine, um, a real credible, genuine. Uh, attempt to get it right, and that's all you need. Last one, Bill. Yeah, Darwin. I know you've always believed in this team, but can even you acknowledge how surreal it is that you're in the Western Conference Finals? Yeah, it's unbelievable, man. I, I thank God every day. You know, um, it, it's been a, a hell of a ride. One, I, I, I hope never ends. It's, it's. Uh, we just have to take it day by day and be in the moment. You know, it. We've gotten past a, a, a two really phenomenal teams, this recent one being world champions four times over. Um, and now we're stepping into another realm, like Bron say, everybody says in the locker room, level three. You know, so now we got to take our, our focus, our awareness up a level. And um, there's only 14, well, it'll only be four teams left. But uh, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, I don't let anything stress me out. It's just, it's, it's fun. It's basketball. And, and, and I'm really, really having a ball uh, coaching this team and, and representing this organization. You always hate me. You always hate me. Mike, you can start us off. Hey, D'Angelo, it's been a pretty steady rise uh, since you came to the team, uh, along with the other acquisitions at the deadline. Uh, just wondered how much in, at a certain point did you foresee that the team could be this cohesive, that could get to the conference finals uh, where you're at now? I told you, honestly, Rob Polinka can tell you all right up. I didn't, I didn't expect this. Um, I didn't think this. So I'd be wrong. I'd be lying to tell you I did. Um, but once we got out there, you could just tell guys liked each other. Guys wanted to play for each other, and it was just contagious. Um, everybody wanted to win. Everybody wanted to just get the job done every night. And you looked up, we had a chance, and we, we ran with that. Just a quick follow-up. Just what, what have you learned about the duo of LeBron and AD, kind of how to play off them, what kind of advantages that they give you as a team in a playoff series? Um, I mean, when you throw a bunch of looks at those guys, they kind of seen it all. So um, for those dudes to just be prepared and to step ahead of almost every coverage, you know, throughout these first few uh, few series, those guys were ahead of the curve and they knew what it was. And it allowed us to kind of just fall in line and, and play off of it. Kurt. D look over here to your left. Um, can you expand on that when you said uh, with Polinka, why did it work? A lot of people didn't think it would, but why did it? He got snubbed for that GM, that, that, that award he was supposed to get. He got snubbed for it, honestly, for him to sacrifice the pieces he made to kind of get the right group of guys, you know, that, that came with that energy. Um, bunch of guys that were selfless, too. You know, we, nobody expected or wanted anything. We, wanted, we worked for it all. And, um, and we had to touch just a tad bit of chemistry in there, too. It kind of made everything that much easier, just being out there with a group of guys that I kind of had a, a, a feel for. Um, and then it just made all the pieces that was here already, it made those guys, you know, feel more comfortable being themselves as well. Um, when you had a, the, right, the right chemistry with guys, it makes it that easy to go out every night and just play for each other. Helene, over to, your to your right. right. Um, did you ever have any doubt that AD would play tonight? And, you know, considering where, how bad it looked the other night, and he comes back 20 rebounds, 17 points, oh. it's pretty amazing. No, he's a champion, man. I don't think he'd miss a game like that. I think this is the time of the year. If, if, anything's, if anything's going wrong right now for you, your body, little aches, I think you'll play through it at this time of the year for sure. Any more questions for D'Lo? Co -co Thank you. Oh, Y'all know I was, about to, Let's go. I was about to get my branding going. Go. All right, well, legacy. legacy. <laughs> Let's start off with Mike. Uh, quick, quick one before the real question. Did you know the 50-plus footer was good right away? It felt good. good. Uh, you know, you don't make many of those, but it did feel good when I shot it. 
All right, that, moving back a little bit now, just just kind of the rise, Austin, these last few years, and like this year postseason now, to be playing almost 40 minutes, you know, relied upon to this degree um, as an integral part of the team in a game six setting against Golden State, LeBron, AD, Steph, Draymond, Clay, the whole thing. I, I, how would you describe uh, what it's been like for you? Oh, man, this was special. Uh, I got a text from one of our really good friends before the series started, right when we won uh, last series against Memphis, and he was just like, no pressure, but you know you're you're about to be in one of the the most you know the biggest rivalry of like my life you know ever since I think 2015 they've been just battling it out Brian Steph and then their whole core. Um, so it's special to you know get that win uh, and to beat a team that's you know so established, so good that. Uh, they've won four rings in the past 10 years or whatever. So it just is great. Um, also, I had my brother here. He flew in from Germany. So it was just a special moment for me. Thank Austin, uh, you guys, I guess your only NBA experience is being a teammate of LeBron James's. But uh, do you feel like playing on his team and going through a regular season where your team is scrutinized and, and there's – a regular season game has more intensity than maybe the average NBA team might have. Can make a group prepared for the intensity that comes in the playoffs. Yeah, for sure. Uh, started off two and ten um, was was not fun. And when you're in an organization like this, you're expected to win, and rightfully so. Um, but like you said, being you know, I feel like until the playoffs, the the month previous that the, the whole buildup was basically playoff basketball for us you know I don't I can't speak for the other teams but you know we were in must win situations for a long time and to kind of be locked in like that you know before this I mean this is different just because you play the same team you know uh, at most seven times but to have that attention to detail the focus that <clears throat> we had to have for the last month of the regular season I think like you said can uh, be a big benefit for us because like I said we were so locked in for so long um, but yeah that's that's really it. Yoba. Austin uh, it, it sounds crazy but this was LeBron's first 30 point playoff game since the 2020 finals uh, was there a moment pregame or you know this morning or whatever where you kind of noticed a different vibe or, or you know kind of could expect this type of performance from him? Uh, anytime you step on the floor with you know him, you expect him to do spectacular things. Uh, his efficiency was off the charts. Um, but like I said, every time you step on the floor, you expect him to be great because uh, that's what he's done his whole career. And honestly, he can be great, and people will still, you know, kill him because he wasn't, you know, who he was in 2013. Um, but uh, his his motor from the get go was was special, and his attention to detail, like I've talked about, is has been has been on ten since you know the first game against Memphis. So. Uh, I'm happy for him. Uh, I know he wanted this series really bad. Jim? Yeah, Austin. Um, there, I'm sure there's a lot of eyebrows being raised nationally about, oh, seven seed and all that. Do you guys still have to – do you still feel like you have to prove that you belong here? Uh, no, not really. Uh, you know, I think the seeding thing is – it's just a number. Uh when you have guys like Brian, AD, uh, that's won championships. Uh, other guys, you know, even Tristan, that's you know been through the fire with Brian and all those championships. Um, always feel like you have a chance, and especially with the roster that we have, the talent that we have. <clears throat> you know, like you seen it was a game four when Lonnie went out and you put on a clinic, and three games before that he wasn't playing. Um, so when you have talent like that. You know, our whole thing before the playoffs was get in. Like, if we get in, you know, we really think in a seven-game series that um, we would be tough to beat. And, you know, I think that that's been proven uh, these first two series. Is, but, you know, we still just got to stay locked in and, you know, focus on the, the main goal. Nikki? Austin, as you look forward, you're about to play in the Western Conference Finals. And when you consider the chip on your shoulder you've had since entering this league, what does this moment mean to you? 
Oh, it's, it's special. Like I said, I have my brother here, my mom's here. Um, it's, uh, I don't know. Uh, I can't really explain it. Um, but, you know, it was not emotional, like, tears-wise, but the, the feeling when we subbed out, you know, with three minutes to go, it was, it was very special. And, uh, like, to do it with a group of guys like this, you know, we go back and Dennis gets kicked out of the game for, I think, two texts, and he's jumping around in the back, you know, celebrating, you know, everybody celebrating everybody's success. So just to be a part of that special and um, hopefully we can keep it going. Eric? Hey, Austin. Uh, you just guarded Steph Clay for six games. Uh, what did you learn about that experience? I mean, to you know, the work, the diligence, you know, and what's the difference maybe between guarding one or the other? They're really good uh, <laughs> is the main thing, both of them. You know, you see Clay goes three for 19, two for 12. <clears throat> it's not easy, you know. Um, when you have to guard guys that consistently move and the whole team is basically doing what they can do to get them open, you know, it's not easy. But uh, like I said earlier, shout out to the coaching staff for like the chess match uh, that, you know, they have to play against the, the Warriors coaching staff. Uh, they were on top of things, schemes, mixing up stuff. Um, but there's, you know, Steph plays a lot more off the dribble uh, than Clay does. But if you give Clay or any of them or either of them any space at all, it's going up and, you know, it's got a really good chance of going in. But I can't lie, I'm, I'm happy I don't have to guard them two anymore. <laughs> Last question. Miriam. Congrats, Austin. Thank you. Um, hey, so I, I want to ask you about, uh, you mentioned the two intense start um, back then. How was Darvin then? So he would, he would like front facing to us. He would sit there and he'd talk about his beautiful job and this beautiful challenge and how much fun he was having despite everything. Like, what was he like for you guys at that point? Yeah, I mean, obviously, two and ten isn't fun. Uh, you always want to win, but as you said, he always had a good attitude coming to work. Um, you know, he said many a times we're we're employed by the Lakers, you know, the best organization in basketball. So as tough as it is on the court, it could be way worse. Um, so uh, shout out to him for, for sticking through. I mean, it's hard. You know, you're, you're getting uh, criticism from everybody. He's his first year head coach and job. So um, for him to, to stick with it and gut it out, you know, with us is, is special. I mean, you can't say enough about him, and um, like you said, he was he was genuinely happy to be at work every day, even when we were two and ten. Uh, and when you have energy like that, that it consistently build um, <clears throat> good habits, and you want to be around guys like that. So, a you know, big shout out to him. Thanks, Austin. Thank you. Ready, Mike. <coughs> LeBron, just going big picture, first of all, all the battles that you had against the Warriors uh, over the years and just the, this one getting to six games, having your most efficient game in game six. So what has that journey been like for you and, and what's the feeling of, of getting the job done this time? Uh, first of all, nothing but the utmost respect for uh, their organization. Um, but as far as the players, you know, Steph, Draymond, and Clay, those are the guys I've had the most battles with. Those are the guys that I, I've been in a foxhole with, in a war, I'm sorry, with or against, and uh, nothing but respect um, uh, for them. Uh, obviously for the franchise as well, and uh, for us as a franchise, I mean, it's, you know, tonight in general, it was, it was uh, great to be able to play one of our most efficient games, one of our best games of the series, and, um, and, and it started because of the defensive matchup that we had. Uh, we defended at a high level, and, and when we do that, then we can be um, extremely, uh, extremely good. And I thought we was locked in as, as close to 40 minutes as possible tonight. Dave? LeBron, you've uh, mentioned the phrase comfortable being uncomfortable for years, and that was something that a mantra that you kind of reflect on. How did you have to embody it this season, starting off 2-10, uh, to get to this point to be in the Western Conference Finals? Uh, just try to be patient. You know, let uh, 
you know, the man above do what he's going to do. You know, um, you know, I felt like um, if we were ever going to be, um, if we ever had an opportunity to, you know, upgrade our roster, um, you know, put some more balance around myself and AD, then I felt like we could make a run. Um, I felt like we could make a push, um, you know, throughout the rest of the regular season um, and then going into the postseason. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, Rob in the front office, they, you know, they did that. They did that. And then it was up, you know, it's up to me and AD to, to come through on, you know, the moves that they made and, um, you know, also, you know, staying healthy, uh, which we wasn't as healthy as we would like to be, but, you know, we still played good basketball after the break and it put us in a position to be able to get in a playing game um, and then play in a, a couple playoff series so far. Dan. AD, uh, two for you, one. Um, we didn't talk to you uh, after game five. Um, how did you feel post game? Were you concerned ever? That tonight would be at risk for you. No. How'd you feel? Fine. <laughs> and, and then, uh, secondly, um, Austin's hit a bunch of big shots for you guys through the course of this season. How big was not only the the one at, at right before half, but then the quick one in the third off the offensive rebound for, for for you guys in this game? And what does that say about him in these moments as a second year player and first time through this? Yeah, uh, we have a lot of confidence in Austin. He has a lot of confidence in himself. Um, you know, he wants to take big shots. He makes big shots. Uh, coach will always tell us, um, you know, a lot of guys try to not mess up their percentage and not shoot it. Um, but he always tells us, let it go, because you never know what happens. And, you know, tonight he ended up making it. But, uh, you know, he has some timely buckets for us. Um, and not just tonight, but th throughout the course of the series and, um, you know, last series and throughout the course of the season. So, um you know, he found his groove. Uh, he's playing well. We definitely will need the next series as well. Yovan. I know you guys got a, a few days to prepare, but what, what are your early thoughts on the matchup with Denver? Um, I mean, they, they've been the number one team in the West for a reason. Um, you know, and they've played exceptional basketball all year. And uh, we're going with the utmost respect for their, for their ball club. Very well coached. And obviously, we know the dynamic. Um, of, of what Joker brings to the game and also Jamal Murray um, being back fully healthy and, and the rest of those guys. Um, you know, so, you know, uh, you know, tomorrow is a, a day for us to kind of get away from the game a little bit, um, you know, just kind of chill with our families and, and kind of recoup a little bit. But um, Sunday and Monday and then part of Tuesday before the game starts, we, we will lock in on what we need to do to, to try to um, – you know, be our be, be at our best versus uh, a very good, um, a very very good, uh, well coached team. So, I uh, look forward to it when it gets here. BT, AD, what do you recall about the last time you guys faced Denver in the bubble in that conference finals in 2020? Uh, it's hard to say just because they're a different team. Uh, we're a different team. Um, you know, I think uh, the the biggest thing for us was. Obviously, having Dwight kind of disrupt Jokic a little bit. Um, you know, he's obviously one of the two guys that kind of get them going, him and Jamal Murray. Uh, and actually, it's funny that me and Brown talked about it earlier, about going back, watching that series, and kind of see what we did to kind of figure out how we can um, best match up and, and get victories over them. So, uh, you know, we'll go back and look at it. But um, I think the biggest key was just kind of make the ball, find the guys we wanted to find, um, and just play off of that. Nikki. That was one game, though. But, shit, I, hope, I mean, damn, I hope they don't find me. <laughs> I hope I get another one this series. <laughs> LeBron, you found ways to conserve your energy throughout the course of a game, but with this series, big picture, were you able, when you looked at how you thought it was going to play out, were you able to conserve your energy throughout these games to have the impact you did tonight in game six? Uh, I mean, it may have looked like I was conserving my energy, but... I mean, I was dead tired after every one of them games. And it's the same with tonight. You know, um, you don't, you do, really don't have the opportunity to conserve your energy versus a Golden State team because they always keep you on your heels. You always have to understand and know that, you know, anytime you relax, they'll make you pay. <clears throat> so, you know, and, um, you know, for me tonight, I was just uh, felt pretty good about my game, um, like I do every night, um, and I just wanted to try to come in and. You know, make some plays and, and be efficient and, and defend at a high level, help AD rebound, um, help our team, um, you know, make winning plays. And I was able to make a few of them. 
Last three. Uh, we'll go Kurt, um, Jim, and Helene. To either one of you guys, LeBron, you talked about how you guys upgraded the roster. When Rob Palenka and the front office flipped this roster, um, how did, and you look back to where you are right now, why did it work? Um, well, it gave us a lot of, I mean, it gave us a lot of shooting, obviously. You know, with, uh, with, with D'Lo and, and B's, you know, and, you know, and Mo, and Mo Bamba when we got there, it gave us a lot of shooting, a lot of space. Um, to, to, to be around myself and AD. Uh, we play on the perimeter, but we're not like three-point shooters. Um, you know, I know I take my fair share, and, um, but you know, when you have that, you know, that space, it allows us to do what we do best and kind of you know, play downhill, but also it just gave, a, it gave, us, gave us a lot of depth. It gave us a lot of depth. Um, you know, it gave us another ball handler um, and, and D-Lo at the time to take, take some pressure off DS and take some pressure off AR at times. And even myself, it gives us a, gives us a lot of uh, um, length when we added Rui and added Vando. You know, so, you know, we were very small early in the season, you know, so we would get stops, but our rebounding was very difficult and challenging for us. So now with the length that we had, we, we was able to, um, you know, rebound a lot better. You know, and um, and then I think the guys that came in, they just they just came in with no um, no expectations. They just came in and say, okay, well, let's figure this thing out. You know, and from from my point of view, a lot of them games, I mean, from four and a half weeks, I was sitting, I was out because of my foot injury, and I was just watching and seeing, you know, um, how could I be better? You know, how could I, you know, once I come back, how can I, you know, put myself in a position to help this team continue to, to continue to thrive, but like they were doing, and. Uh, I just got super excited, probably seeing a lot of my tweets when I was not playing, and I was just super excited about the games and being played, and um, I couldn't wait to get back. So, I mean, it's a lot more, but that's the cliff notes of it. Last two. Hey, LeBron, do you guys feel like you're playing with house money at this point? What does that mean? Well, I mean, I, mean, I know what it means. As, as, far, as, as far as expectations what does that mean? From, from the outside? No. Nah. As Vanda will say, no, 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 we're trying to win every hand. We're trying to win every hand. That's your expectation, our expectation yeah, 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 inside. Yeah, 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 yeah. no. Nah. Higher than, you know, um, showing up oh. to the West Coast Finals. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I did want to ask about the rebounding tonight and also whether you were, were you focused on rebounding tonight and at any point did you feel hesitant or did you feel okay the whole time? Uh, no, I felt fine. Uh, the time that they beat us, you know, they got a lot of offensive rebounds and uh, kicking out to four threes um, or getting, you know, second chance points. So I uh, just wanted to have emphasis on rebounding basketball and limit their uh, offensive rebounding. Uh, they got a couple. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure that I did my part in, you know, trying to get every rebound possible um, on both ends on the floor, but mainly defensively to limit them from those second chance points where they're most deadly. Thanks, fellas.